Hello. Hi. To the Figuring Out Podcast. Vessel. My name's Dana. My name's Dominique. And this is episode 32. Episodio 32. Woo! Dominique, how are you? I'm okay. I'm getting yeah. through it. Yeah? My cat's a little sicky poo. Mm. The girl needs her teeth extracted. Mm. So we're working on that. She got back from her, like, echo this morning, and she's good. Yeah. The measurements of the four chambers of her heart are perfect. Oh, thank goodness. As the vet says. But, yeah, to to be continued. You know cats don't need their teeth to eat food? I did not know that. They literally just need their teeth to let teeth. Jesus. They need their little teeth. They need their teethies to just, like, tear apart flesh. Oh. But otherwise, they could just chew with their gums and be happily dandily fine. So it's basically just the leftover genetics of being a lion. Literally like <laughs> molars, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. I love I love quick facts. There you go. How are you, Dana? I'm doing all right. I'm what are doing you doing? Good. Um, I dyed my hair pink. Yes, you did. So I hit the final level of mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. It's a, it's a very you. nice rose gold for those of y'all who can't see, which is everyone listening to this right now. Uh, check out my Instagram, Dana Renee underscore underscore. Mm-hmm. Two underscores, we're still there. <laughs> Always gonna be. Dos. <laughs> my, week Dos. Has been, my week has been good. Um, I have no real updates. Okay, that's... I'm kind of just living in love. I taught my cousin how to blow up a balloon today. Good for him. He got it. He stared at himself in the mirror and made sure that he didn't pinch too hard and that he wasn't biting it with his teeth. Just so you get the right amount of pressure into the balloon. It's all in the technique when Dude, you're blowing a balloon. picked it up quick. He's a smart kid. He's just my favorite kid. You need to let him know he has a fan base. I will. Trust me. Please. I'm seeing him tomorrow. He... Can we have Jackson on the podcast? Um, yeah. <laughs> we could oh absolutely have him on the podcast. I it feel would, like he'd... It would take like three hours to get like an actual recording done with him because he'd be everywhere, but we can edit it. We it's really, fine. That's the beauty <laughs> of editing, though. I feel like just like... How old is he again? Exactly. Four. Do you know how much insight a four-year-old has? Dude, he has so much attitude, too. There's no bullshit with no. a four-year-old. They no. just are straight up, will tell you how, like it, how it is, like it is. He remembers everything, too. And every time he comes over, he's like, Dana, can I paint with you? You told me next time I see you that you can that we can paint together. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, I think that's, did. <laughs> that's the beauty of childhood, though, because, like, that's his world. Yeah. He, he probably only had, like, conversations with, like, five people during that whole week, so. Yeah. I mean, like, he's in daycare and stuff, so, like, he hangs out with, like, kids his age. Yeah. But, like, he's not having, like, intelligent conversation. Like. As far as we know. who I Like, mean... it could be, like, groundbreaking shit going on, like, over snack time. Like, graham crackers and milk talking about, like, the inconsistencies of the, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> How the cheddar goldfish are better than the white cheddar goldfish. It's hard-hitting stuff. The flavor blast goldfish are just the ultimate ones. But oh. the pizza goldfish, throw it in the garbage. I like the pretzel goldfish. Pretzel. Yikes. They're my favorite we goldfish. <laughs> no, we weren't. I feel like you'd, like, dip my hair in paint if we were in preschool. To me, preschool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I cut someone's hair in preschool. Oh, my God, Dana. Yeah, I was that girl. Damn. I also cut my hair in preschool. I and they sent it home in an envelope. They sent it home in an envelope to yeah, just to, like show your mom, like, look, look what she did. They were just like, I, we don't know what to do with it, so take it home. Like, take it home. We don't know what to do. Like it's evidence. <laughs> <laughs> they sent you home with Exhibit A. Oh God, Amazing. Well, would you like to get into what we're talking about this week? I would like to get into who we're talking about this week. Or who we're talking with this week. That we are. Who are we talking with this week, Dana? I don't know. Who the fuck are you? (laughs) Hi. (laughs) I'm Olivia Beck. Olivia Beck? (gasps) Singer-songwriter from Jersey Shore. Nice to to meet you. (laughs) (laughs) Firmly. Had her first single out at the age of 17? 16. 16. Is that one on Spotify? Yes. Yes. Which one is it? That's Jersey. Jersey was your first one. Yep. I listened to it. I listened to um, 8-track. The, the, the album. The whole album. <laughs> the whole damn yeah. thing. And, um, <laughs> wow. I mean, like, musically, like, have you ever heard of Joni Mitchell? Yes, I love that, her. 
those are the vibes I get That's from you. That's the words I needed to hear. Was <laughs> <Good. laughs> that I have Joni Mitchell vibes? <laughs> We're glad to bring you the inspiration you need. <laughs> Do you have any projects that you're currently working on? Yes, I am working on a new album. What? Set for the summer, Ooh. hopefully. It's a lot different from the last one. Um, it's a lot punchier. Yeah. It's a lot more soulful. Mm -hmm. That one was kind of like, oh, first album, I have a whole bunch of these songs. Let's just get them out, yeah. you know? And then this one was, they were all written consecutively, like, for each other to be on the single album. So I'm excited. So it's, so it's like a whole just story? Like one big art piece. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm excited. Good. And how long have you been working on that so far? Um, I feel like I started in January. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's always complications yeah <laughs> right so it's just like it was, never ending it, yeah exactly so, so what phase are you in now or you have you written all the songs for the album are you in the process of recording them all oh yeah they are written they are set to be recorded a mm -hmm. few are i have a rough draft of like like there's a single first that one's in its rough stages of just needs vocal and some details and then we're set to release it um but it's hard when you don't have a band, too. That's the other thing. Like, I'm just kind of picking musicians from everywhere, which is awesome mm -hmm. in itself because mm -hmm. it's, like, an experiment type of thing. Right. But then eventually, like, when you need that consistent recording schedule, yeah. it, it's hard, you know. Oh, can so and so play the drums today? Like I have my boyfriend's. Um, my boyfriend's on like three different instruments. For yeah. One song. <laughs> like, oh my god, this poor guy. <laughs> but a dream team, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> But that's how it is, you know, you just gotta work through it. Yeah. And I think it'll be really cool. Do you have a name for the album yet? I'm thinking of one, and yeah. I think I'm set on it. Yeah, you're not announcing anything yet? I can. different names um i'll tell you the name of the single okay it's called the giver the giver it's exactly what it sounds like yeah. mm -hmm. um and it's about you know being the woman the giver mm -hmm. the healer the lover the fighter yeah. the mother but things you like to that give it to yourself. oh yeah exactly <laughs> time to turn around give yes. it to you baby 2019 you're worth it <laughs> Now, you said your boyfriend was on, like, three instruments for one of your songs. Yeah, something like that. Does, did he do that for um, all of the songs you've recorded, or do you play any instruments of your own? I play piano. Ooh. Um, it's very difficult that I don't play any instruments, because yeah. a lot of time I find myself like, I need boom boom chat, and they're like, give me <laughs> boom boom tonk. I'm like, no, boom boom chat. <laughs> what the f*** does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what boom boom chat is. <laughs> so, it's hard that I, you know, it's difficult sometimes not being able to play the drums. To get exactly, like, what you yeah. want. Yeah, and that's why you need people, like, like, that you have chemistry with. Yes. So they can understand that part, yeah. and that's why my boyfriend's good for that. And I have, a f I have a good team right now going, too, and they all are very, um, what's the word? Understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Like, awesome. oh, Olivia needs boom boom chat. Let's all talk about what that means now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's awesome that you have that support. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're amazing. Okay. So I guess we're going to kick it off from um, last week's question. Yes. Every oh. week we have our guest ask the next guest a question. So this question comes from our previous guest, Walter. Oh. How are you turning your passion into impact? Wow. Right off the bat for <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, deep Walter. Jeez. Um, I would say, how am I turning my passion into impact? I would say writing about it and, and using music to bring up certain topics. I want people who think that their voices are not heard to know that they are heard, mm -hmm. especially with, uh, I don't know if I'm even in the right direction with the question, but especially with the song The Giver, mm -hmm. um, I've been talking with a lot of women, especially lately, who feel like in any relationship, whether it be, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, father, brother, sister, that they are the givers and they are constantly doing something for someone who never really sees it. And I wrote that song specifically for that situation because we have, I'm sure all of us in this room have been there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, 
specifically for that so that people know that they're not alone in that situation. Um, so I guess I would say that I, I want to write for the people who think that their voices are not heard and I want the world to hear that. I like that. That will make an impact. That's yes. well said. That is Definitely. very, very well said. Well said. Okay. Very impactful. Very eloquent. Yes. <laughs> So. Or just traumatic, you can... <laughs> no, <laughs> pretty perfect, pretty perfect. Definitely will be impactful because, you know, you, you got to give a voice to those people. Those mm -hmm. people deserve the voice the most. Um, what do your average days consist of? Oof, I'm boring. Um, <laughs> no, I would say work. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to, it, it's hard, you know, playing music every day, but you just got to do it. It's your passion. Right. So mm -hmm. I've tried to do that, and I've definitely been getting better at it. I'd say there was a little bit of a, a, a gap. Um, I like art. I like to paint a lot. What do you paint? Actually, I do these, I, I'm an art major at school. Huh? So I do these, um, they're like ink prints, and there's like this tracing technique that I learned, mm -hmm. and I became obsessed with it. So... It felt like cheating at first, but then my art teacher was like, no, Michelangelo did this. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, cool, okay, so I'm not a cheater. So it's like a tracing technique, and I've done it, I do it with musicians. Mm -hmm. um, so I do it with a lot of local, there's this band called Skyline. I did um, the lead singer, Brittany, I, I did a little portrait of her, and I let her use it for promo. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of starting to get back into it, too, of like doing local bands, custom designs. Mm -hmm. I did my boyfriend, I did him when he was the lead singer of his band. I did this band called The Double Negatives, their lead singer, just like ink, black and white, like negative images of the person playing their instruments. And yeah. then I started to get into like Bruce Springsteen, Jimi Hendrix, things like that. So I love doing that um, in my free time. And I work at a florist, so there's a lot of work there. <laughs> What's it like working at a florist? I love it. I love it. It's hard work. Yeah. It's a lot. Of, it's so much harder than you think it's going to be, but it's such a... It's such. It's worth it with yeah. all the flowers and oh, everything, and I've learned so much about them yeah. too. Yeah. So I see you on your Instagram stories with all with flowers yes. in your hair all the time. Yes. I'm just like, why is this bitch getting flowers? <laughs> and you know what? They throw so much away, and it's not just my flowers. Yeah. It's yeah. like there's so many flowers that don't get the love and appreciation. <laughs> I'm, so like, I'm with you, flowers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I steal them any chance I get, and um, yeah, I love it. It's hard work. A lot of physical work. But you're just always constantly surrounded by a nice smell, and it's beautiful in there. It sounds like so, a daydream. Yeah, it is really cool. Truly. A lot of, like, work and is, like, an artistic setting. dream, too. And you know what we say? Like, it's the weirdest job, too, because you're with people, like, on the best day of their life at their yeah, wedding. Yeah, wow, yeah. And then you're with people, like, at funerals. Yeah. When, like, the, their loved ones die. It's, like, yeah. the worst day of their life. But we're, like, it's such a weird... You have to be ready for that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, I bet. Sitting with a family funeral with like tears in your eyes, and you have and to, like, you have to keep want it together. Red roses exactly. Or white roses. <laughs> wow. And they're like, Did how much? Like and you're like, five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, exactly. But does um, working at the florist serve as any inspiration for your music at all? Oh yeah, definitely. It's a good creative outlet. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I have done a lot of jobs where it's robotic cashier yeah. you know mm -hmm. things like that yeah. <laughs> retail so it's nice to be able to once in a while throw a bouquet together for someone and oh this looks good and i made this and i got paid for it like it's a good it gives you a sense of pride exactly yeah like i it's something to be proud of it's something to look forward to Ooh, what like it's like a challenge oh, yeah. they want two lips in this so let's make this yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you'll end up crying because they didn't like the bouquet oh. the it's worth it. but you tried your best <laughs> exactly. and that's what matters <laughs> overall but that's art like it is a form yeah. of art it's and a form it of design not so. everyone's gonna like your art exactly truth to you sister yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay that doesn't mean it's not art there you go what is something that makes you want to wake up in the morning Ooh. My dog's barking away. No. <laughs> um, my My family. chicken's crowing in the my backyard. My chicken's crowing. I do have chickens. My family, my pets. Um, my, my musical team. Yeah. I would say, like, there's nothing like going out to see music. I'd say that's, like, one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Just around Asbury, like, mm. going out and seeing. If you just, if you're ever at a concert, like, just stop. Even, like, a local one, just stop and look around. And, like, that's that feeling I love. Like, how many 
people just came together just to see this. Yeah. Like, it's like when you watch fireworks. You ever yeah. look around when you watch fireworks? Yeah, and you're, you're just, just like, like this is so cute. looking at one thing exactly. right now. Exactly. Yeah. It just, it brings everyone's attention. It's yeah. the best feeling. And I'd say that's, like, one of my favorite things to do right now in life is oh. to, like, see that and see people come together, you know, family, friends, yeah. everything like that, because of music, yeah. mainly. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's You're just an awesome kid. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you say that you love yourself? Oh, yeah. Good. You know, there, there are days. Yes. Well, yeah, there, are days. <laughs> there are days. But I love what I do. I love my friends. I love that I get to do this stuff with you guys. Yeah. Like, this is cool as hell. Oh, thank you so well, much. We are very glad to have you here. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I definitely want to trade it. Good. Hell yeah. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, in one word, where describe where you hope to be in five years' time. In one word? Yeah. That's rough. Um, anywhere? Yeah. Does it mean to be specific place or like? No. I would say laughter. Good. Say so I would always want laughter. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. It's the best music. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> <And it's laughs> medicine. medicine. <laughs> there you go. It's music, it's medicine. Wow, that was poetry. Thank you. I do try. <laughs> Snaps all around. <laughs> um, as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Ooh. Mm. You want me to be, you want the honest answer? Uh, yes. Yeah. A fucking lunch lady. Really? No, I thought they got to keep all the money. It's like, oh, I'd retire so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking money from all these fucking kids. For the longest time, my dad's like, what do you want to be? A lunch lady. <laughs> Why? Because they get to keep all that money. And he's like, I'm going to let you believe that. I'm going to let you. When, I'm when just did let you, this play out. When did you realize oh, that was not the case? Probably like 10 years old. Solid 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you asked a lunch lady, so yeah, what you make? <laughs> She was like, she's like, like $9 an hour. She's like $25,000 a year. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? What? You should be a millionaire. You should own a Porsche. You should own a Porsche. Oh, man. Yeah, I thought it was like a private business. Like, yeah. Doreen's keeping that cash. Like, it's like a lunch, leftovers. Each lunch lady owns it, their own small <laughs> business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I bought it from Doreen today, so. It's, you're it's real home cooked food. <laughs> yep. What comes to your mind when you think of home? Hmm. I'd say the sun. Really? Oh, wow. I have a lot of windows in my house. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the morning, you know, like on a Sunday, everyone's up and the sun shines through the windows in the summertime. That's my favorite. That's how I think of home. Oh, that's very sweet. So cute. It's so cute. <laughs> I start sobbing. <laughs> and besides music, do you have any other hobbies? Um... Yeah, there's the art. Yeah. But here, let me think of something. Let me think of something. <laughs> um, it's like you could just talk all day by yourself. And yeah. The second someone asks you a question, you're, you're just like, like, I'm. What do I do? Boy, Who am, am I? I? <laughs> um, I would say I like running a lot. Really? I never did anything with it. Yeah. But it's just something I enjoy to do in my free time. Mm-hmm. Running. Um, is it like relaxing to you? Yeah, it is. Especially like after. It helps you. Clear your head, get your energy out, mm-hmm. so you can kind of relax. I love doing that. So yeah, I'd say running. Good. I've always liked running. That's a good answer. Pretty nifty. Um, is your career your passion, or do you work to support your passion? I work to support my passion, definitely. Is um, your passion something you eventually want to turn into your career? Yeah. And not even in the sense of, oh, I'm going to perform on stage at Madison Square Garden, just like yeah. music in general. I, I helped produce my boyfriend's new EP that just came out. Go listen, Be Wood, Learning Curves. <laughs> and um, it was so much fun, and I realized, and even some people talked to me about it too, about songwriting and producing and just having an ear for music and using it as opposed to, oh, I need a band. And, like, I love, I love performing, but in the long run, I think, like, I, to retire, I'd love to just produce music, like maybe mm-hmm. move to the city and, you know, help artists be more behind the scenes yeah exactly i would love that yeah i mean i'd love either one but equally so yeah i agree with that very nice what is a skill that you wish you obtained surfing really yeah 
I love the beach. Have you ever tried surfing? I've never tried. I'm terrified. I'm like not a good swimmer either, so that's uh, the only thing. Like, you should be a good swimmer. Lock down the swimming first, yeah, exactly. and then bring like you the board walk into before it. Before you run, swimming. <laughs> like, literally, you could use like the arm swimming. Those will keep you afloat a little oh, bit. While Surf. on the surfboard. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Those yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few reasons, but why not? <laughs> I just, I just I just that. Fuck it. <laughs> Pull in Olivia's dad. I'm gonna let you yeah, believe yeah. that. I'm gonna let you I'm believe. Let you play out. <laughs> What is a saying or convo? Conversation is what convo is short for, if you didn't know. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That has impacted you to this very day. Huh. Um, okay, so I have the, he, he's my drummer, mm-hmm. on and off, but he was my voc teacher mm-hmm. uh, for, like, audio recording. He's the one who helped me release all this stuff. His name's Bill Burke. And he, <laughs> something I think about a lot is, he told me once, you don't need to know the info. You just need to know where to find the info. Nice. And that changed my whole perspective. Yeah. <laughs> and he always let us have notes during tests because mm-hmm. you don't need to know it. You just need to know where to find it. Yeah. And if you take good notes, you can find them in your notes. And you're good. And, I, like, and he said, even backstage, I think, look it up. Yeah. Resources. So you don't need to know the notes. Just know the resources. Yeah. And things like that. So that's a, that's a good one. That is a very that good is Thank you, Bill. I think about it a lot. Like, weirdly. Shout out to her. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> Changing lives, making an impact. <laughs> now, throwing it back to life at 18, can you describe your life at 18 and how it compares to where you are now? <clears throat> 18 was graduating high school. Mm-hmm. Going to college. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> so I actually went away to college yes. for a year. Um, can I talk, should I talk about that? Yeah, you Absolutely. can. Go ahead. It was just not for me, and I ended up coming back, of course. Yeah. Um. And how far away did you go? Oh, I was in Staten Island. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it was like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it first starts, it first starts and you're like, football games, yeah, parties, yeah. And then, you know that episode of Spongebob where it's just Squidward on repeat and he's like in that Squidward town yeah. and everyone's doing the and same thing every day? And then smile is just slowly exactly, falling. Exactly, slowly yeah. falling. That was it. And I was going crazy. So I came back after the first year just because I didn't. And you see, it's like when you're stuck in a simulation, and you're like, guys, we're in a simulation, you don't understand, and everyone's yeah. like, let's just party, forget and about it. Like, but do you not see what's going on around us? Can we please? Like, we're paying $60,000 a year to be at this bar right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, just drink, take shots. I was like, I can't do this. So I ended up coming home, and that's when I released my album, because mm-hmm. I just was like, I lost so much time, I'm, you know, I need to do this and that, and it, it helped drive me a lot, yeah. life at 18, I would yeah. say, and it helped me kind of realize what was important to me, and how it's okay that what is important to me is not important to other people, Yeah. so I think that that's what I would say about life at 18. When you were going to school, were you going to school something for something different than art? No, I was art, um, but it just wasn't enough, like... Mm-hmm. Without the music. And I, I had, like, played around here and there. But Staten Island's not really music, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's not the art. local music scene. And you're coming mm-hmm. from Asbury Park, New yeah. Jersey. And yeah. you're going to Staten Island. I'm like, oh, my God, I need to go home. Like, yeah. there's nothing here. So that was a big thing. But the creative outlet that art, my art classes were for me helped a lot. But I'm kind of happy they didn't help that much. Because it kind of made me realize, like, wow, that's not enough. Like, yeah. I can't just get through on painting pictures and pretending that everything's okay. I need to go home and play music. So, yeah, it definitely helped a lot. Good. That's awesome. Um, is there a time you wished you spoke your mind, but you didn't? Hmm. Or are you more so the type to always speak their mind? Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> Lately. Lately? Growing up. You just kind of start to not care. Yeah. You start, oh, I'm just going to be yeah. honest. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 so it's so much better. It's so much better. so much energy in the long run. But let me think. I would say um, I loved... Can, can it be involving music? Ooh, it can be yeah. anything. Okay. I would say, like, the first album I released, it was great. But there were a lot, there were a lot of things I let slide, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what this album is for, too. Just being, like... I don't like that. I've yeah. become so much more... I heard Beyonce say this quote yeah. <laughs> that said she 
she she'll sacrifice being a bitch for her art. Yes. Like if it makes her art better, she will be a bitch. And I did that a lot. I just let things slide, you know. Oh, we don't need to have guitar on that. Your piano's fine. I was like, all right, fine. You're the boss. You're recording. And things like that. And this one, I'm starting to, no, do it again. No, yeah. we said we'd do this and we're doing this. And it's already, I'm looking forward to it so much better. Because it's your vision and it's exactly. finally your vision. And I was like, oh, they're all doing this for me. Yeah. I can't I can't boss them around. But, but they're like, doing it for you, so you need to boss yeah, them around. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, weird, is that weird? Is that weird? Yeah. too. Yeah. Especially when you haven't been, like, a pushy person for, like, your whole life. Yeah. yeah. It's real. It's, I'm sure it's a learning experience. Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But so much better just to be, like... Even with my friends, like, I've lost friends because of this now. Because I'm just like, you're being annoying. Like, I just... <laughs> I'm so done. I'm I, so done. But, like, if those friends are in your life anymore just because you told them they were being annoying know, when they were being annoying... There's for that. Fuck, you know what? You're I'm way like, better off. Say it to me, too. Tell yeah, me what I'm Tell me, crazy bitch. I need to know. Need, it's, like, like, it's, <laughs> it's just like... You need your friends to ground you. Yes. Exactly. And be like, hey, psycho. Oh, yeah. The floor's right <laughs> you're here. You're being... Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's so hard to, like, step out of your own, like, perspective. Yeah. and be like, am I doing this? Yeah, what yeah. am I? Can someone, you need can I that. get a check yeah. on this? You need that. Yeah. You really do. So, good for you. <laughs> Seriously. No flash. Check on your friends. <laughs> check on your fucking friends. <laughs> and also, check your friends. <laughs> what makes you lose faith in humanity? Oof. Oh, man. <laughs> I could be so mean right now. You could be as mean as you want. The pop music that's out nowadays. <laughs> the pop music. <laughs> the, uh, we need to sell records. We need to sell it, and, but we only have an hour to make it. Just come up with something yeah, and sell so it. Everything's the and equation. then it makes millions. And I'm like sitting here at my piano trying to find the right. Like, and I'm seeing all these local musicians in Asbury working their asses off, uh -huh. and I just can't believe it. That stuff. Yeah. That same it's, country song that plays on, <laughs> you know what I mean? The Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I know it's that not song. that it's the country song. It's just that it's there's almost no effort. Yeah. Now. Right. Like it's so rare that we find someone who really takes the time to make a good song. It's a timeless yeah. song. Yeah. yeah. And it's because like the exactly. person who's presenting the song to you probably didn't even write it. Exactly. Probably had no personal touch added to yeah. that. And I could just make a song in five minutes that's like a pop song, like, and just try and sell to record companies, but I don't, because I don't think it, Cause it, it has matters. Because I think it's, yeah, I think it has no substance. Exactly. Like, Lady Gaga wrote Poker Face in 15 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Things like that. But it's a fucking it's, bop. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all say that too. I'm like, I'm a victim to this. Like, yeah. Oh my we god. Are. I'll go hard yeah. to poker. Because yeah. there's a fucking like, there is a fucking like equation for yeah. that shit. Oh, there's yeah, like exactly. that earbud. Thank like, you next is, is the equation. Exactly. Yeah. Seven rings is the equation. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's things like that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, oh. And it gets stuck in your head, and you sing it. And you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Like, I'm just supposed to be stubborn. No, I can't like this. <laughs> My boyfriend's like that too because he makes music with his friends. Yeah. So and he probably works day and night at it. Oh, yeah. They like, they've been working for months to com to complete their EP that they're working on, and they just they sent me like the rough draft of it the other night. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's so good. I'm so yeah. excited mm -hmm. about it. Is it rap or? Yeah, they do uh rap and they like make their own beats and stuff like that. That's cool. It's super. Super dope. Find it on SoundCloud. And that's just hard. Like, e &E. <laughs> I'm still learning how to make beats in my, like, audi auditory? What is wrong with me? Audio recording class. Yeah. And that's hard. Like, I'm not even discrediting. Yeah, no. It takes forever for yeah. them. But it's like, the, you know, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The four chord pop song that just is, like, yeah. popular in a week. But, yeah, it's gotta be so hard to live in a world where, like, you know, you get so much more recognition for being unoriginal when yeah. originality is, like, what changes what but also, like, what's meat? original anymore? Nothing. Yeah. yeah. There's That's no true. such thing as an original thought. Yeah. You, you, I could think of an original Your thought. Your thought has already been thought. Think, so. Okay. You th really Sorry think thought. anyone's ever thought about pouring hot sauce on a platypus? Ever? I have not. Original thought? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Debunked. <laughs> but I'm certain someone in Russia probably has. <laughs> Are there platypi in Russia? Is that their national animal? I feel like it might be. I'm intrigued. We can figure it out. Hey. Hey. It's knowing where to find the information. Yeah. Google. Go. <laughs> Growing up, how is your relationship with your parents? And is it better or worse now? Uh, phenomenal. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very blessed. They have always supported me. Um, 
in any way that they could, and they're very cultured people. Mm-hmm. They're very, um, you know, in music and art, they yeah. aren't. I don't want to discredit a nine to fiver, but they weren't like nine to fivers. You know what yeah. I mean? That were like. All right, up, drink coffee, go to work, come home, watch a football game. Mm-hmm. Like they're very into art and 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 cult- other cultures too. Yeah. That's a big thing. That's good. And they let me wear what I want. They let me draw on the walls when I was little. I remember my aunt said to my mom one time, "Are you crazy? Like you're letting her draw on the walls?" And she's like, "Yeah, that's how she expresses herself. Just let her do it." That's amazing. And wow. things like that. She's like, "We could paint over it. Like yeah. it's not a big deal." That's amazing. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I have really really amazing parents. And my dad's from Cuba, so I think that has a lot to do with it. Is he's uh-huh. seen like the worst so little things like drawing on the walls he's like that's awesome like, yeah she has a wall to draw on that's, yeah <laughs> that's yeah. just great honestly yeah well, uh, what do your parents do if you don't mind me asking my mom is in insurance and my dad is actually have you ever seen george lopez yeah those the the show yes he yes. works in like an airplane factory that's what my dad does okay cool oh, yeah okay. so he was also in the air force too mm-hmm. like he came from cuba when he was little and then he went to the air force as, you know, not immediately. Oh my god, <laughs> ten year old going into the ten year old, right? I mean, for certain, 30, 40 years prior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Child yeah. labor laws were different back then. Yeah, in Cuba, no, yeah, definitely wouldn't be in the airport. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, right. He up came the to floor. America, so so yeah. that he didn't have to do. That. <laughs> but um, yeah, and my mom does insurance, and she just always has. But it's like, it's weird, like. She has a lot of people in her job that are like, yeah, you know, I just did this because it was what I could do. Like, um, you know, this is my job or this is what was available to me for good money. Yeah. My mom, like, has such a passion for insurance. Oh, And my she's God. good at it, too. Yeah. Like, she's, like, won awards for it and stuff. Like, like for some like reason, her. she's just so good because she has empathy. Like, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah. She's not just, like, an insurance company. She was, like, she knew she was dealing with people. I think yeah. that was it. It's important to not yeah. lose that human element in anything in, you do. Uh, yeah. yeah, I agree. That's um, amazing. <clears throat> would you say that you are more intellectually aware or emotionally aware? Emotionally, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Have you yeah. always been more emotionally aware? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And that kind of that kind of came with the art. I, yeah, I definitely yeah. do that. And like the the poetry and the, the music and writing and stuff. I just always. Under, uh, understood that part more so than like I don't know it's hard to explain like I've always analyzed people how they're feeling right off the bat I can mm-hmm. tell you like it's weird it's a it's but I think it comes with that art yeah artiness definitely. you know the creativeness yeah the, yeah the sensitivity exactly. the, it's more so that way I think. yeah yeah definitely emotionally yeah. do you think that's um have you f- found ways in your life where that uh helps you or comes into play oh yeah definitely when I'm Trying to book shows and you could tell right off the bat, oh, this guy doesn't like me. <laughs> like, right, I so do important to pick yeah. up on those There's vibes. There's times when I leave places and I'm like, so my boyfriend, oh, that girl didn't like me. He's like, what? <laughs> How do you not know? And then like weeks later, he's like, you're right. Like, she doesn't like you. <laughs> oh like, my I God, I told you. Yeah. I really told you. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, it's and an I, instinct. And I don't want to say like men don't have that, but I do think... That's that's a very woman. It's it more is. common in women, definitely, to be able to tell emotionally what someone, to have that intuition, you know, like of what they're feeling, especially about you. Especially, it's just how we're raised. Yeah, yeah. Like, and especially if, like if you're in, you're in a mother role, you yeah. have to know how your child, your exactly. nonverbal child, you is know. feeling. You yeah. have to get that like yeah. vibe. Exactly. So yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Oh and yeah. How's your, oh yeah. How's your relationship with them? I have three sisters. Um, all girls in your house. All girls. Damn. So that right off the bat tells you our relationship. No. <laughs> We're a lot of screaming. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. But you get to express yourself, so that's no, yeah, definitely. pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, we're we're all we all kind of have that creative thing too. So we're very mm-hmm. we get along very well. That's awesome. Obviously, the occasional girl fight yeah in the bathroom but like (laughs) that's my shirt yeah exactly and you see me and victoria like we used to work with dana you should have seen us at work it was like the dumbest things yeah (laughs) sometimes they would come in and then olivia would be like vic are those my shoes (laughs) and then she'd be like you left them in my room like (laughs) exactly and then like five minutes later i'd be like i missed you yeah i haven't seen you and then I'm like, I'm your manager, Vic. You have to listen to me. She's like, no, I don't. And I'm like, like, shut up, yeah, exactly. Olivia. <laughs> Is she younger than you? She's younger, Vic. Me and uh, Victoria are the two youngest ones. Mm-hmm. And then I have Jacqueline and Elena, the two oldest. How old are they? Jacqueline is 25. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Sorry if I get this wrong, Jacqueline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know my sibling's age. And I think Elena's past 29. 29. And Elena just got married this past weekend. Congratulations! Congratulations! So, so much fun. You just went to a wedding this past weekend? Oh, yeah. How the fuck was that? It was so much fun. I was a bridesmaid, too. Oh! oh my god. What were the themes? What were the colors? So, it wasn't really like a theme, more like an aesthetic was like Gatsby. Like, there were pearls hanging from the big feather centerpieces oh. that my floor is did my our little wow. shop did <laughs> so um we wore like these light pink dresses and gold it was like gold and pearls was like the theme oh so it was really cool oh. and Very um musical. it's actually really yeah, funny me and victoria had to make beautiful. a speech and we the night before sat down and we're like oh my god we gotta make a speech what are we gonna say like <laughs> we're the only ones making a speech it was the best man and us oh my god so <laughs> we're like oh my gosh so we're freaking out and we end up I think I have to burp. No, I don't. We end up <laughs> taking like this notepad and, and writing down bullet points. Why Elena and Billy would be a good husband or wife and husband. And so we were like, obviously it has to be funny. But so we start writing this and then we end up fighting. And I'm like, stop, <laughs> you're so annoying. And I end up leaving. <laughs> and then we drove to the rehearsal dinner and we like started to rehearse with um, my boyfriend in the car. Mm-hmm. And he's like, guys, this sucks. <laughs> We were like, oh no. But we didn't have time to fix it. Because you know how weddings are. It's like, go, go, go. Especially yeah. when you're bridesmaids. So we had to, you know, go to the rehearsal dinner and then go to sleep and then, like, wake up and then get immediately start getting ready and blah, blah, blah. So then we're walking into the reception and I'm like, oh my gosh. And we finally, like, remembered, oh my God, we still have to give a speech. I'm like, Brian, the notepad, it's upstairs. He's like, oh, go get it. So he <laughs> runs and. He gives me the notepad. I'm looking at this thing. I want to burn it. I'm like, oh my gosh. These are so bad. (laughs) So then we're sitting down and it's like a waiting game. The salad's coming. Then we, then the best man does a toast and then we eat for a little bit. And we're like, what are we going to give the speech? And we're like sweating the whole time. She's like, oh my God. Oh, Liv, we're going to die. I'm so scared. And I go, shut up. We're fine. And then we, we start to eat our salad. And then I'm like, oh my God, Vic, I'm so scared. And she's like, you shut up. You just told me like to shut up. So we ended up making a speech, but it was like, you could tell how nervous we were, and that's what made it funny. Yeah. People were dying laughing because we were like, oh my, oh my god. <laughs> we're like fucking <laughs> out. I was like, so this speech isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> this speech is being written as we're saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, we wrote this on the way here. <laughs> I don't understand. So then, if we take a minute to read this, it's because it's scribbled. We hit a bump. <laughs> exactly. We hit a bump. Oh my exactly. god! And I was like, "This like is holding out to the light. Like, <laughs> is that an N or?" I'm like, I think that's what it says. <laughs> Welcome to Crocodile. Our, what? Our, <laughs> oh, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! But people are like, "That was so good. You guys are so funny." We're like, "Yeah, we totally planned that." <laughs> Dumb and dumber skit. Like, <laughs> oh my god. We really lucked out. Who is good? You don't think it's gonna work out? That's usually yeah. when it works out. The best. Exactly. Honestly, <laughs> luck is when on somehow. your side. Somehow, <laughs> you slipped through every single crack. Oh my god! I can't wait to see the wedding video of that. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Ooh. <laughs> so amazing. I love weddings. Okay, you have to make one rule that everyone in the world has to follow. What the fuck's your rule? Be nice and help people. Hey. Very nice. Uh, should be the golden rule. Should be the golden rule. Yeah. Of course, there's like little that. like r- rules like, not if it makes you feel some type of way of <laughs> or affects you mentally. Mm-hmm. Of course. Help people still, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Don't overextend yourself. Yes. But yes. Still know your limits. Know your limits. Boundaries are a thing. Mm-hmm. Boundaries mm-hmm. are a thing. Also important. Set them up. Talk Do about Do that them. for yourself. <laughs> we're all just like, like pointing at the mic. We're all just like, yeah. Uh, Did you guys know that, that they do a lot of physical movements? On oh, this? we're very active. I started the wave <laughs> at the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> oh, we're very active. This is how I burn calories. <laughs> this is my workout. It turns out we're actually doing yoga the entire the time. The entire we're time. <laughs> oh, it was my calming how? breath. <laughs> How do you deal with stage fright? Or do you get stage fright at all? Or oh, performing sh- anxiety? So much. Yeah, how do you deal <gasps> with that? Kitty! <laughs> That's Daisy. She's so small. She is a small girl. She oh. has she has teethies that need to come out. Teethies. <laughs> oh, that's the teethy cat? She's the yeah. teethy cat. Hi, Daisy, teethy cat. <laughs> um, I definitely do get stage fright. Uh, numbing. Yeah. Crazy stage anxiety. But I... S- 
find that it gets better the more I play. So, like, if I do a show once a month, that show's gonna suck. So I'm gonna be so scared of shaking. Yeah. But if I did, like, four or five shows a month, yeah. the so consistency of it. the yeah. practicing, playing, like, being in front of people eventually mm-hmm. just... And that's, I think, another reason why musicians are so driven or have to be so driven is because sometimes your show is a practice like is a rehearsal session for the next show like Mm -hmm. and so that's why I think especially Asbury Park musicians are always like twice a week playing shows out and so I find that booking more shows and being there and and practicing and seeing people and socializing helps me get better for the next time. And that might sound dumb. Like, of course, practice no, to get not. better. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But like, so many people miss that aspect. Like, they, yeah. they just, they, um, for instance, I work at a, a test prep company. And so many parents think that if they, you know, uh, purchase at a certain price point, they'll get their kids' grades. When we tell them from the beginning, no, you have to actually practice. Yeah. yeah. It, it, practice it's, it's about is, your kid actually taking the test. You know, no, there's no it's, quick fix. It's it's hard work. Yeah. You just have to put you in have the to work. Just keep doing it. Yeah. And my art teacher once told me, do a little, a lot. So the more, like, little spurts of shows I have, or, mm-hmm. you know, it, it adds up. It, doing it a lot, it yeah. adds up, as opposed to, like, I'm going to do this a little bit, and the next month I'm going to do this a little bit. Like, it needs mm-hmm. to be a consistent yeah. type of thing. Or even just, like, like exploding all of your energy in one sitting and be like, yeah. oh, I don't have enough energy to do anything Yeah, exactly. Else. Um, when you are on stage, do you find yourself, uh, with that, like, kind of stage fright and anxious mentality, or do you find at a certain point it kind of fades away? Yeah, I would say at a certain point it fades. Mm-hmm. The first, it's such a personal thing, too, like, mm-hmm. singing your songs that you've written. Right, it's, it's your heart on the fucking platter. Like, yeah. You will be up there naked, and it took, it took me a while to kind of grasp that, as opposed to, like, oh my god, what do they think of me, thinking about what do they think of the lyrics? What do they mm-hmm. think of the song? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of when it fades away. Like, at first, you're like, oh, adjusting your clothes and, yeah. and fidgeting. Like and then as you start to sing, you're like, wow, these people are listening to these lyrics. And that's what they care about, is, yeah. like, the song and the music and the energy. And even, like, then there's still a little, like, bass line, f- stage fright. Yeah. But then being with a band is the other thing. Like, when I'm solo... And obviously, when I'm solo, I'm freaking the fuck out. Like, I'm not going to let you see it, but I'm freaking out. But when I'm with a band, it's like, you're just with a group of friends. Like, you know, strength in numbers. So, and we're vibing. And I'm thinking more so about the music when I'm with a band, I'd say. Yeah. Obviously, I think about it when I'm alone. But when you're with, you know, these people that you share chemistry with, it's, like, hard not to express yourself, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. I understand that. You should be with people yeah. like that, that just make you feel like... Oh, let's just all get naked on stage together. Seriously, that <laughs> commodity is everything. <laughs> Your EP release. <laughs> We're all getting naked, guys. Birthday suit there. show. <laughs> no clothes, no cover. <laughs> You're good. Um, would you say that you're a take-what-you-can-get kind of person, or are you all or nothing? Hmm. It depends. It depends, yeah. Depends on the situation. Right. Pick your battles. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, with music, I'm like... All or nothing. Give me all. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you my all, you better give me your all. Uh Uh-huh. And that's more so now with the being honest, speaking up type of thing. But, um... (laughs) (laughs) Scraps all across. Did that. That was wonderful. (laughs) Your physicality is rubbing off on you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Just having this microphone here really gets the energy. Yeah, right? We all just <laughs> start, start like, The best part of it is people listening have no idea what's going rain on. Rain dancing around this microphone. It's very therapeutic. Um, but yeah, like you, like, um, I forget this fucking author's name. It's Mark something. He's an author of, uh, The Subtle Art of Not. Oh my god, I just stuff. read that! It changed it's my fucking life! Amazing it changed book. my life! It, it changed my perspective. It. You only have such a limited amount of fucks to give. Yeah. Put your fucks towards something And that's, that that's so funny that you said that. That's literally the reason I decided to be like, fuck this. I'm going to be more honest and just tell people how I feel. There like, you I go. go. There you go. That's literally the reason I read that book. Mark yes. Manson. Mm-hmm. And, and I read it and I wrote notes. Kind of 
deal. <laughs> I, ta- I, pa- I passed it around all my friends. My mm-hmm. boyfriend read it. His mom read it. I have all read my it notes. Yet. We were like, wow. Like, I haven't read so it yet. Good. I need to read it. It changed my life. Like, read and I know that's not so stupid. Yeah. No. Like, what I was like, I couldn't take my eyes off of it for days. I well, when like, whoever has your copies done, hands it over. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> I got you. Bro. No, I have it on audiobook. Shit. It's okay. Do I? You want to borrow my phone for a week? <laughs> we can swap. No. I'll pretend to be you and see how that I'm, goes. Oh my god. Parent trap. You no. flirt with each other's boyfriends? Yikes. 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 Oh. <laughs> Just entertain them for a week. <laughs> oh my god. Now, hmm. before we start wrapping up the podcast, mm-hmm. I have one more question to ask you. <laughs> this is scary. What is something that someone can do to make you lose all respect for them? Ooh. This is hard. This is hard because there's many things, <laughs> you see. <laughs> there are many things. Mm-hmm. But I would say, um, treat someone else like they're below you. Mm. Oof, and I don't want to say especially women, but I'm a huge feminist. But... <laughs> and it's something you deal with so much in music. Oh, it's yeah. just those... Those and women too that treat yeah, other women as if yeah. they're like oh, it's, it's a real it's thing. A superiority issue. Yeah. It's exactly. literally how they were socialized yeah. to just be like you have to exactly treat, yeah. to be on top. You have to treat others like they're below. Yeah, it's like, not always it is. Anyone, but me seeing it, it, it's more common in with women yeah. in the music. I don't want to say industry because I'm not in there yet. But that's a damn shame. Even in the music industry, you could say that that's a valid point. Yeah. But um, yeah, the second. And this is a real thing. I will write people off for this. The second I see someone treat someone else like as if they're below them, and music and art is such an ego, like you you get too much popularity from it. Sometimes your ego gets yeah. a little crazy. So that's exactly. where it's, and that it's affects a the music the exactly. Yeah. And that's where it's very common. Like, oh, I'm I'm better than you because I'm more popular. Than yeah. You. And I've dealt with that, and I've screamed to people for that, mm-hmm. and you know, Cuban temper. But <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's where I'm I'm done. I don't care if you're. Bond freaking Jovi. The second you like start treating someone as if they're below you, because they're not. We're yeah. human. Yeah. Oh wow. We're like all you have same playing field. some good songs, but it doesn't mean that you know. Yeah. You're a, a god. A below, yeah. And it's just like it would just all. You could get so much more out of any experience if you're just like all on the same level, because yeah. then you could just like bounce off of each other exactly. and like make something even better together instead of feeling like you have to shine separately apart. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Uh, That's it, man. Ah. Uh, Value others the way you would like to be valued. Yes. The golden exactly. rule. The actual golden rule. Yes. Love that. Rose gold. Rose like gold. Like my hair. Exactly. <laughs> like Daniel's hair. <laughs> so one of the last questions that I want to ask you before we start wrapping up um, the podcast uh, kind of ties back into your music. Um, I was kind of wondering about your inspirations, your process when it comes to like writing. Mm-hmm. Like if, do you have a preferred setting? Is there like... <coughs> Sorry. Um, I definitely do. I'm kind of picky about it. Mm-hmm. As far as the process, it's very slow. Mm-hmm. I I will never force it. Mm-hmm. And that I found that that's where I clash with a lot of musicians is that they're like, let's write the song in an hour. And I'm like, how about we get the chorus today? In a few days, we'll hang out and get the verse, like things like that. I think that it's very important not to force anything because that's where that shitty pop stuff comes yeah. in where it's like, just spill it yeah. out, just force it out. And so that's a thing. Mm-hmm. I just like to deal with it very slowly and never force it. And I, I'm very picky about certain things. And it's frustrating sometimes. Cause I'm like, oh, I know this could be better, but also I could just leave it like this. Yeah. But I'm not going to do that. You know, make it the best. And then, oh, you said something else. I forget what it was. Just like if you... Oh, the setting? Yeah. So that's actually, I have a funny story. So, and this, not one particular story, but every time I record with... My friend Burke, he knows me like the back of his hand. Every single time, we'll record something in a studio, <clears throat> and he'll do the first take. All right, Liv, like, go ahead, perform. And I'll do it, and it'll be okay. And then he'll come in, and he'll shut all the lights off. <laughs> and then he leaves. And then that's the take. Like, that's the one. He's like, I know you. Like, I know, because I've told him my room is where I write my music and where I perform my music. Mm-hmm. And you've seen my room. It's so mm-hmm. dark. It's, yeah. like, in the bottom of my house. So it's, like, it's like a basement. Mm-hmm. So all the light is coming from, like, dim lamps. And there's barely any light. And I kind of like it like that. It's like mm-hmm. a bat cave. It's, like a, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, little, it's yeah. a little cocoon. Mm-hmm. So um, just, like, get my incense going. I'm, like, a little fortune teller. <laughs> so, so he, every time, he actually shuts the lights off. 
off. So I do better performing in the dark. Because it's recording. where you're most comfortable. Exactly. It's where I grew up literally yeah. doing that. So it for the most part, that's like for the recording process. But for like stage, you, you have to be ready for the light because you're yeah. at the center of attention. <laughs> so there's like a certain mindset I have to put myself in when yeah. I'm on stage. It's like a safe place. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just picture the dark, you know? Yeah. Dark soul. <laughs> just like, okay, tap into my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Let's you're cough out in that your bat cave. <laughs> <laughs> you're hanging upside down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, remember when we started and we said that every guest asks a question for the future guest? Walter, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> sure, you so strongly. you get to ask a question to us and for the future guest. Okay. It could be the same question. <clears throat> It could be two different questions. What was his question? His question was, how are you turning your passion into impact? Wow. That's a good question. How do I follow that up? It's okay. His question was his favorite type of porn, so it could be anywhere in between. Really? Yeah, the question that... (laughs) (laughs) It could be any... Yeah. (laughs) The guest prior to him asked that question. (laughs) Let me think. Um... It could be a dumb question, too. I don't know. I think I'm gonna go the uh, the, the I'm gonna stick with the serious route. Okay. I like a little serious. Yeah. What are you doing? It's kind of similar. Okay. To help a local artist. Oh. Such as not just music, but yeah. painter, mm-hmm. a musician. Mm-hmm. What are you doing to help the local art scene? Yeah. Well, I. Um, well, I mean, we as a podcast are... That, no, we're yeah, interviewing, agree. That would be my answer, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. We're interviewing people and things like that. But me as a person, I, I'm trying to help out local artists by not only interviewing them, but sharing their music and things like that mm-hmm. through social media, because that's be- the fastest way, really, to oh, yeah. get word it's like around. It's like the, the way. It's like yeah. the telephone. And any, the and telephone and was yeah. me. And any yeah. time that I'm talking with someone about music, I, like, throw in, like, hey, my boyfriend does music. Yeah. Like, like he's a rapper. So check him out on SoundCloud. Yeah, you like, literally just did, too. Yeah, like... <laughs> exactly. It, but it comes up so naturally that it's just like, hey, this is the thing that, like, I'm passionate about and that I think you would enjoy, like... And that's so awesome, though, that that's natural for you. Yeah. Like, that's awesome to be that woke and be like, oh, there's a whole underground thing of people sharing their art and their soul. Yeah. And I'm just going to mention it here because it's my second instinct. Yeah. But some people just don't. Yeah. (laughs) And I I seriously want to get way more into, like, the local music scene and art scene and everything like that because I I feel like those are my people and that's, like, what's calling to me. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. We agree with you. (laughs) (laughs) So, um... What is one overarching message that you want our listeners to take away from your episode? What is the message you're trying to spread? Um, I guess I'm going to stick with that one. So support, 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 support your local artist. the unseen. Mm, Just because you can't nice. see it doesn't mean it's not there. Perry. Does that make sense? Yes. Because I just sound like a stoner right now. No, you sound like perfect. Oh, cool. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always, I mean... Believing is not always seeing. Yeah. Believing is knowing. Or no. go and see these things. Maybe that's another thing, too. <laughs> Which is getting more and more obscure. Like, but if you're blind, you can see. It's okay. It's okay if you're that blind. You, you, have can see, you see more when you're blind. <laughs> or you're Helen Keller. Eee. Eee. <laughs> you're Helen Keller. Talk with your hips in the name, in the words of three out of three. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> anyway. Olivia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, podcast. guys. Thank you so much. I love what you do. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank and you so much. Thank I am so honored to know you. Oh, Likewise. I'm honored to know you. And just met you, but I'm so honored. <laughs> Likewise. I'm probably going to listen to your album again on my way Woo! tomorrow, so. Where can the people find you on social media if they want to find you? <clears throat> Everywhere. So I am on the social medias at Hala underscore Beck. Olivia Beck, you can also search. It'll just come up. B-E-C, there's no K, I swear to God. <laughs> I promise. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> and um, as far as music, Spotify and Apple Music, just search Olivia Beck. I'll be there. Ooh. Shwerd. And we'll Ooh. be listening to you. We will. Thanks, love. <laughs>
Where and then they find you, Dana? Oh, I was gonna say, Dana. I mean, Dana. ladies first. <laughs> Are you not a lady? I'm what? a man, baby. Wow, I'm all okay. <laughs> I'm all man. <laughs> find me on Twitter and Instagram at, well, Twitter at Dana Renee and Instagram at Dana Renee. What? You missed your underscores. All of them. All three of them. You saying that you're a man really threw me off. <laughs> I just to everyone. You can find me on Twitter at Dana Renee underscore and on Instagram at Dana Renee underscore underscore. That's D-A-N-A-R-E-N-E-E underscore or D-A-N-A-R-E-N-E-E underscore underscore if you really want to get fancy and see pictures of my face and maybe my art. And also, you can find us collectively on Instagram at figuringout underscore pod. And Dominique, where can they find you? Y'all are really interested. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Dobby Darko. That is D-O-M-M-Y underscore D-A-R-K and the number zero. zero. <clears throat> well, thank you again so much for coming thank and being yes. on and for giving such uh, your wonderful worldview. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you guys. And uh, we can't wait to see what comes for you in the future. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thank you. And we will see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.